also provide mitigations as well. This means we provide integration with the seam and seam can have better visibility of the events as well. Now, as I mean, I answered this question that why breach and attack simulation system, but just to recap on all those things that BAS can automatically uh, can simulate advanced attacks and you don't need actually very expert exploit developers all the time sitting and doing this thing. Okay. Because BAS has a SaaS approach, which is software as a service. So many organizations can definitely take the benefit of the common knowledge, which is actually developed under the breach and attack simulation system. And more importantly, BAS is also a business safe as well. So it's available 24 by seven and seven days a week as well, just upon the convenience of the SOC, uh, SOC people. So that's why like breach and attack simulation technology is a multi-vector and very realistic attack simulation or emulation approach. So what to look in the, in the, in the breach and attack, uh, simulation system. I mean, what are the important parameters? It is also important to look at that. Uh, first of all, the most important thing is that you have, you should have some advanced exploits as well. Many companies are selling their breach and attack simulation system, but I've heard that first time selling is, is okay, but reselling them is difficult. Why? because the addition of the new attacks is very slow and a painful job as well. Okay. So that is the main challenge for the breach and attack simulation system to always update themselves. That is actually that they have. Welcome to global information security society for the professional of Pakistan. Uh, first of all, I welcome everybody to our today's session. So we are doing a session of a very, very long time. I believe the last session we did was in December. So unfortunately, after that, we were not able to do any sessions for, for two, for a couple of different reasons. One of them being uh, no, not no availability of any speaker. And also I had some uh, engagements, but mainly it was because of uh, there were no speakers available, unfortunately. Anyways, today, we're having a session with Dr. Masoom Alam. He is from Comsats. He will introduce himself in detail later. He has done sessions for us before on very, very good topics. And again, he has come back to us and he has, is having a very uh, interesting topic today about breach and attack simulation and a demand for advanced exploitation. He's also representing, uh, he's a CTO of a, of a new startup. Cytomate. He will also explain about, uh, uh, tell about the company and himself, inshallah. So, Dr. Masum, uh, let's start. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Shahzad Subhani, for uh, this very great opportunity. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this session that I'm conducting today, along with my colleague, Mr. Usman Sikander, is on one of the state-of-the-art topics which is breach and attack simulation and the demand for advanced exploitation. So taking opportunity of this talk, I also want to introduce our company, which is called Cytomate. It's a Qatar based cybersecurity startup and it is being invested by Qatar Development Bank as well. And uh, we have all the people which are uh, present in our company, they are all highly uh, uh, high security professionals. Uh, first of all, I mean, let me just introduce you what is breach and attack simulation. And I think most of you know about the concept as well, that breach and attack simulation is an offensive methodology where you try to check the organization security controls in the event of a cyber attack. So essentially breach and attack simulation gives the capability to the SOC people to test their own security controls. Uh, 
a very good example of this would be that, for example, you have fire uh, alarm systems which are implanted in all over in your building, but you need to test them as well. Like, for example, that if there is a fire in the building, in the event of such uh, such a hazardous situation, how the fire alarms are going to behave. So this is exactly the same purpose of the breach and attack simulation as well, where you have the attacks and you want to simulate them. Uh, I want to clarify the methodology of simulation and emulation as well. Simulation is something which is being done in a very controlled environment, while emulation refers to an actual environment attack. So the, the word simulation to me is not correct. I think so it should be emulation because in breach and attack simulation system as per the Gartner, we are actually performing attacks, emulation actually. So this is not a controlled environment or this is not a banana or vanilla environment. This is an actual environment and in the presence of the security control. The today's topic is about breach and attack simulation and the demand for advanced exploitation. So taking opportunity of this talk, I want to present uh, to all the audience uh, a bit of a difference as well. Like there are many breach and attack simulation system like uh, uh, one of them is, for example, safe breach. Other one also simulate is also an Israeli vendor. Uh, definitely we have exam like, cyber as well. And we have, for example, PICUS as well, or PICUS from Turkey as well. The, the demand for advanced exploitation means that the breach and attack simulation should have very advanced exploits in order to test the capability of the security controls, which are meant to secure an organization. So you are testing their capability. Another objective of breach and attack simulation system is also that it gives the capability. So rather than you invite all the time red teamers in your organization and also facing the privacy issues as well, you are given a software interface through which you can launch an attack based on your convenience. For example, on the weekends, you don't have the network traffic or there is no one in the office so there will be no disturbance as well. In that case as well, you have the capability to do it again and again. Uh, this is a bit of my profile. Uh, I am actually uh, a university professor and I'm proud to be a university professor at Comsets University Islamabad. And uh, uh, like it's, it's like my passion as well that I always tend to work with the industry and less with the academic and, and research papers. So that's why like uh, I have actually taken a big step now that after being promoted to full professor, I just got step out of the university for some time, uh, just on a, on a leave and join uh, a Doha based startup and just trying to see that what I have learned in the, in the academia is actually applicable or not. And uh, with me, I also have Usman Sikandar, who is one of uh, the best colleague and exploit developer that we have. And he's also working in our company as an exploit developer. And he has got some tremendous skills in network security and information security. Also, malware development is his like best uh, skills that he has got. So let me actually, these are the session instructions you have kindly to uh, just to listen to us. And at the end of the session, we are all here to answer any of your questions. So first of all, I mean, what are we discussing today? I just want to actually give you a brief overview that what exactly we are going to discuss. So first of all, what is the reality behind the enterprise security? We are going to discuss that. Like even we have a lot of security controls. We are paying a lot for firewalls, for uh, for antiviruses to EDRs to now XDRs even. Okay, so uh, I just want to highlight that exactly like we have all these security control, but still we uh, we get these news very uh, often that uh, organizations are being hacked as well. Okay, so what is the reality and why this is actually happening? 
then we want to highlight the difference between the red team and the pen testing and uh, what is the need of exploitation i mean it sounds a bit unusual that you are trying to hack your own organization why is so basically okay and then we will describe the breach and attack simulation why breach and attack simulation and what to exactly look in the breach and attack simulation systems as well that are already present in the market we will do a uh, uh, a very brief comparison of the BAS vendors and the simulation approaches that are currently in the market. And is BAS is enough for proactive threat hunting and for security control validation? So, I mean, this is also going to be the question of today as well that we will be asking and trying to answer through our presentation. And then, for example, how can we empower breach and attack simulation? Finally, we'll have a conclusion and then a question answer session so let me quickly dive to the presentation that what is the reality of the enterprise security if you see this specifically this diagram 97 percent of the companies which have already deployed the security control so i mean they have some sort of uh, security controls in play in place either they have a web application firewall as well or they have the edrs for example i mean all of you know that now windows comes with windows defender which is like not 10 years back, uh, there was no security control or very weak security control. But now Windows is also emerged as an uh, one of the best security uh, control provider as well. OK, so even if you see, for example, in the cloud of Azure or if you see Microsoft Windows itself, Defender has a very notable place uh, in, in terms of endpoint security. So what I want to say is that not, that's why we are saying 97%. So if Windows usage is increasing, this means security controls are already there as well. Then 99% uh, 90, of the attacks are known ones. So here I want to give you an example. Last year, 2021, uh, Blizzard's group actually, the, the North Korean one, they actually, and the APT10, the Chinese one as well, they have used Mimikax. I mean, all of us know that in the enterprise environment, Mimikatz is a big no, actually, okay? Like even if you just have the Mimikatz, um, a Defender or any other EDR is just going to kill the process, actually, and they are not going to let you have uh, this very smart utility in the network because it's very offensive. It's going to take hashes out of the Active Directory. Uh, so, I mean, this is still, I mean, the, the, the attacks that, that we are referring to, they are very old one and still they are happening. And then because of the misconfigurations of the security controls as well. So you have the network security controls and the endpoint security protections, email security protections, web application firewall, web gateways as well, okay? But still there are problems that are being uh, pointed out and definitely there are many problems that are not being uh, uh, pointed out as well. So what I want to say is that this is the reality of the enterprise security. You are having 97% and the known attacks are already being done and still the security controls are uh, uh, are being operated but uh, in a misconfigured way. So now how detection works, Mr. Osman, can you please uh, join in here? Sure, sir. Thank you, Professor Dr. Masoom Alam and everyone. So basically in this slide, we are covering the detection mechanism. Uh, sir, can you please next slide? Okay, the security controls which we have deployed in our environment basically works in three mechanisms. First one is signature base, then heuristic base, and then the behavior base and dynamical analysis. So uh, I want to explain one by one. The first thing is the signature base. Whenever the malware is dropped on the disk, the first thing that a security control do is basically they calculate the hash of that file, they come, uh, they uh, known malware and known things and match that those things with the database. If it exists in the uh, threat intelligence database, if they have the database, they uh, they consider it malicious binding. And the second thing is heuristic detection. Heuristic detection basically the security controls see the function calls, the pattern of code, and the known, uh, known function call, APS call. This is a basically heuristic detection. 
and in the case of sandboxes they do a dynamic analysis they run in a con isolated environment in a controlled environment and see the behavior of malware what memory part is they are uh, assessing what type of file they are accessing what registry changes they are doing so basically this is the dynamic analysis and sandbox execution control now attacker try to evade the defenses so for the signature based it is very easy to bypass signature based defense we just compile recompile the binary we change the signature we change the code we change the variable name and uh, one example uh, i want to must say that if we are using ms venom shell code which is uh, you know highly detected by av and ed or solutions so in static analysis the windows defender caught it but when we encrypt with the aes 256 or other encryption algorithm we can bypass static analysis easily so in heuristic section we use a fascination call hide the apis like windows apis are the well known apis that mostly attackers use but i will uh, explain later uh, native apis and traxis calls so these are basically the mechanism to bypass the heuristic section now for sandboxes we have multiple checks we can check the ram size we can check the vendors either it is executing in the vm where or in the uh, virtual box i we can detect the network adapters so i remembered once my colleague was a reverse engineering and exploit so in that exploit attackers knows about the microsoft defender emulator username and desktop name so he said the checks if the username is john do and the computer name is this so program will be exit so this type of things will be do to bypass the sandbox checks usman it will be interesting to 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 tell that actually this particular test was there to bypass microsoft azure official sandbox okay yes. because they had detected this thing that the computer which is used to to sandbox their malware having this particular name so they put that uh, a thing in and then they were able to even bypass the the sandbox of the microsoft azure as well which is very difficult to bypass in in most of the cases yes 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 i i i have mentioned that microsoft defender emulator that was the microsoft emulator so attacker knows about it so okay now the red team and the pen test what is the difference between red team and the pen test next so basically according to my knowledge pen test is basically more concern about vulnerability assessment we try to find the well known vulnerabilities and exploit them and uh, do a reporting and whatever but red teaming is something like mimic the real attacker compromise your environment like a hacker who emulate all ttps and tactics under mitre attack framework and see the security gaps and vulnerabilities uh, just like an attacker but pen testing we mostly uh, focus on vulnerability assessment known vulnerability assessment cv is something like that so i have got a question as well swan just to clarify the audience that is it also true that in pen testing usually they uh, they quest to actually switch off the security controls as well so they don't intervene in their job actually so they they are able to find the vulnerabilities uh, so that's why the 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 uh, i mean is it true usman if you can answer this thing that the pen testing yes. and red teaming is different in the scope and in the objectives yes yes that's why i have mentioned here restrictive scope i am not pretty much sure about the defender thing that uh, anti virus thing but The pen testing is more concerned about the vulnerabilities. I think they turn off the shielding and trolls and define the scope that these known vulnerabilities we assess and try to uh, explore these vulnerabilities. So pen testing is more restrictive scope with expedition. Okay. Okay. The question is why we need advanced exploitation. Then next slide, sir. Okay. the question why we need advanced exploitation we have to think like an attacker we have to validate our security controls even though we have spent million of dollars to deploy our security controls but till we are not sure our, our security controls are re re ready re ready to uh, stop the attacks 
when on attack so we have to think like attacker we have to validate our security source regarding the miter we have to simulate advanced tttps so in the next slides i will explain next question but if you can kindly explain us the ttps as well like what is ttp this is tactic technique and procedure yes. so why this is so important in the context of offensive security and why uh, we should know about miter attack framework so uh, this will be very helpful for the audience to understand the basic purpose of the ttp okay, okay. so basically miter attack is a well known uh, adversary tactic technique project framework Uh, so ttp is basically tactic techniques and procedure tactics like uh, persistent later movement uh, defense vision and tactics uh, techniques is under uh, tactics what type of techniques uh, uh, attackers use like in case of process injection defense vision in case of process injection dl injection these are the techniques and further they have multiple procedures like what you are uh, doing to uh, uh, evade the diffusion so this is basically a tactic technique and procedure according to mitra attack framework that it was used in their apt campaigns okay. so basically i have had two example here this is a one example simple to why we need advanced exploitation i want to share my experience as well here so basically this is rw detection and a vision so first i will explain the rwx detection so basically let's suppose we are doing process injection uh, malware is doing a process injection he tries to allocate a memory in a remote process write malicious code on that memory and execute so he need to create a memory in remote process so he use windows api sometimes native apis or sometimes direct sys calls let's talk about the windows apis so he must use virtual alloc or virtual alloc x for remote process to execute uh, to to uh, create a memory in a remote process let's suppose and malware is using a virtual alloc x and the memory permission is rwx rwx means readable writable and executable now whenever the memory re region is rwx at the same time this is a great indicator for security controls so in my malware usman, access usman can you just one second can give me one minute guys uh, there was a problem the session might break after some time but use the same link to join again i was under the impression that this is a paid account but there is a problem here so account is not paid huh? so it might break okay. after for a few minutes okay. please continue okay okay So in first code of chunk, I have used a API virtual log and created a memory with RWX. Whenever I compiled and executed, the Microsoft Defender caught it. Although I encrypted the shell code, but still it was caughting. So what attack uh, basically developers do or attackers do? They create a memory with just RW ex, um, uh, RW permission. RW means writable and readable. And after before the executing malicious code they change the permission so this will get it from the rwf detection this is actually i am explaining here rwf detection can bypass using once we call a api that will just generate the rw mem region and and then write the code and after writing the code we change the permission so this will bypass the rwf detection next slide sir okay in second example basically i use direct sys calls okay for the uh, dynamic analysis or behavior based detection mostly attackers use unhooking or uh, direct sys call or indirect sys call i must want to explain these three uh, in unhooking must basically attackers try to copy the neat anti dl the dll copy because they have not hooked by av at eds solution and try to execute uh, sys call instruction but by accessing anti dll is a great indicator for scouting controls and they caught this uh, this so the next step is direct sys call then attackers use direct sys call they don't use anti dll dot dll things they don't do uh, use native api they direct call on a kernel level so this is something that i want to explain here i use a random prototypes i use a random name native names you can see you all you write a random name so this is the sys call i have created a sys call some instructions and embed it in the c and compile now you can see this is also giving a tough time to reverse engineer 
because the uh, name of prototypes and the name of it apis is random so this will take a time for a reverse engineer especially in a static analysis they can't uh, say that this is a malware injection and don't disturb this type of thing so this is basically uh, aware the dissection and also harder a malware analyst to analyze this binary thank you usman for this very brief and detailed uh detail explanation that why we need advanced exploitation i mean the point here is that you have the security controls i just want to reiterate our objectives again we have the security controls no problem but can we just trust on them with a blind eye i mean that is actually the point and that is the case that we are making here and we are telling you that that i mean security controls are very good to have but trusting them blindly is not what we should do a the b point is that we need to have a mechanism even to check them as well and it is not possible for all the security people at the same time to have the advanced exploitation techniques as well as usman was uh, just mentioned so our point is that do we really need a kind of mechanism through which we can check the security controls even at this level that we know that whether security control is able to uh, to check for the memory based exploits as well can we have this capability in our hands that is actually the point of making this whole presentation and that is where the breach and attack simulation comes into play so now i'm just recapping the whole point again what is breach and attack simulation this is actually to simulate the advanced ttps so we want to verify that whether our security controls are better equipped to uh, to secure us from the ttps of the attackers or not i want to share this example with the audience that ttps are Uh, are the best way to identify the hacker nowadays hackers comes from vpn so i mean it's it's very difficult to identify a chinese person in china okay so ttps are the way where you we know that how advanced exploitation works okay so do all the organizations have this capability to check their security control with such advanced exploits okay do they have the capability to invite the exploit developers all the time sitting in their organization all the time also creating privacy issues as well okay do organizations have the budget to always have such exploit exploit developers come in their premises because you know like this is something uh, very very expensive as well for having such a red teaming that is going on so the 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 answer is breach and attack simulation system to test the the security controls effectiveness we simulate advanced ttps i want to explain the ttps which is tactic techniques and procedures devised by the by, by the mitre attack framework the reason is that it's very easy for the exploit developer or the hacker to change the skin of the exploit change the skin of the malware so they can change it but what they cannot change it easily is the tool set that they have used to compile that malware the logic behind this okay or the indicators that uh, that are used by the malware so those ttps we simulate in the breach and attack simulation those ttps the second point is that of course our 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 purpose is to identify the gap and vulnerabilities as well which is a very general objective but we also provide mitigations as well this means we provide integration with the seam and seam can have better visibility of the events as well now as i mean i answered this question that why breach and attack simulation system but just to recap on all those things that bas can automatically uh can simulate advanced attacks and you don't need actually very expert exploit developers all the time sitting and doing this thing okay because
SaaS has a SaaS approach, which is software as a service. So many organizations can definitely take the benefit of the common knowledge, which is actually developed under the breach and attack simulation system. And more importantly, BAS is also a business safe as well. So it's available 24 by 7 and 7 days a week as well, just upon the convenience of the SOC, uh, SOC people. So that's why like breach and attack simulation technology is a multi-vector and very realistic attack simulation or emulation approach. So what to look in the in the in the breach and attack uh, simulation system? I mean, what are the important parameters? It is also important to look at that. Uh, first of all, the most important thing is that you have you should have some advanced exploits as well. Many companies are selling their breach and attack simulation system, but I've heard that first time selling is is okay but reselling them is difficult why because the addition of the new attacks is very slow and a painful job as well okay so that is the main challenge for the breach and attack simulation system to always update themselves that is actually that they have to go through the advanced knowledge of the ttps all the time and it's a never-ending process it is always going to happen if you want to have more attacks coverage in uh, in your system the second thing is the custom attacks custom attacks are the one which are really lethal attack very very uh, 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 very secretive attack so how to perform them you definitely need uh, the team to have all these attacks being done and then tested against those security controls then you also need to look at the malware types as well. Ransomware is the most piercing one, but other attacks, uh, the backdoors and all of them should be tested. And uh, then you also need to have a visualization in your platform, uh, which should be very easy for the, for the security people and for other people who are actually using such an offensive software. So it will be very easy for them to comprehend the knowledge which is actually the output of the breach and attack simulation system. Uh, breach and attack simulation system and the vendors and their approaches. Uh, the, if you see, I mean, what are our competitors? Let me actually introduce our company as well. Cytomate, as I said, it's a Doha based uh, cybersecurity startup. Our competitors, if you see in the region, uh, we have Picus, which is a Turkish company. Okay. Simulate, Safe Breach, they are Israeli based. Rendori recently been acquired by IBM and Attack, Attack IQ, which is a US based company. Now, if you see the upper side, we have got the, the, the attack scenario language. Okay. And uh, this attack scenario language is used to create malwares with different skins. So we have the capability even to change the code of the malware as well on runtime. So whenever we deploy for a customer, we change the malware actually. We want to test the security control. I mean, the purpose is really not to hack him, but to check the security control. So it's, a, it's actually a, a, a mouse and cat game, which is going on between the security control and our exploits. So we want to make them really, really dynamic. Then we have custom malware, custom malware which are really depending on the weaknesses of the security controls. We have known attacks as well, I understand, but we have some contextual threats as well, which means we have our full cyber deception system which can capture the malwares that are targeted on your organization. And then we are going to test it in our uh, in our breach and attack simulation system. And this makes the whole story and we have advanced uh, TTP. In, in other vendors, you will have custom malwares as well, right? Known attacks, known IOCs, but to date, not a single BAS vendor has the capability of having cyber deception connected with the, uh, with the breach and attack simulation. So I take this opportunity to say this thing that to the best of our knowledge, we have not seen a security 
uh, software like breach and attack simulation system that can be integrated with cyber deception system as well. So I mean, getting malwares from known repositories is no issue, but getting the attacks which are really targeted on your organization. For example, if you are part of a petroleum uh, organization, you will have different set of hackers that are interested to come in or breach in your organization than the one if you are working in a banking industry, they will be different set of uh, hackers. Basically. So that is actually what called the contextual threat. So you really simulate those uh, uh, those exploits that are targeted on you and not just general uh, ransomware or malware. Okay, uh, basically the CyberMate have multiple emulation approaches. So I want to explain one by one. The first approach is custom malware. We have a malware developer teams that develops exploits with multiple uh, advanced techniques like I have mentioned some like encryption of application, AP hatching and other multiple techniques for lateral movement for data exfiltration and uh, according to MITRE attack TTPs and emulate those approaches uh, with the best and provide a remediation and a de de detection plan to organization. The second approach is basically contextual threats. As mentioned, Dr. Masoom, we have a cyber deception. We have a mechanism. We gather the targeted threat intelligence. Uh, according to MITRE, the threat intelligence will be useful when that is contextually inherited with the organization threat. So we collect the malware, shell cores, TTPs, and emulate own organization to validate their security control. So this is the second emulation approach of Cytomate. Next slide. Now the third approach is basically cyber reversing. Now we have the team of cyber reversers. We have a uh, cyber reversing mechanism in which we do two things. First thing, vulnerability research. Vulnerability research is basically uh, by using fuzzing and uh, static or uh, audit of code review to find the vulnerabilities and exploit those vulnerabilities. And the second approach is red teaming. We reverse engineer the state of the art malwares, public malwares, uh, known malwares, and drive the TTPs of that malwares and use in our red team exercise, in our malware development and phishing. All this is the third approach of simulate, uh, 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 cytomate emulation. Uh, now, as uh, previous slide where I mentioned that we have a custom language ASL in which we change the skin of uh, malware, we change the signature of malware. So basically this is our custom language, which is dynamically at a runtime, change the code of, change the chunk of code of a malware, change the signature of malware. This will help to bypass signature based detection as well as reduce based detection of the malware. It's every time we compile malware, we change the signature of malware and change the codes of that malware and function name to check and validate the security control. They have three main parts, pre-execution in which we change the signature and codes, and then we have agent task and download the malware execute in the present of security controls to validate the security controls. And the last step, we clean the system, we do reporting whatever the results and provide the remediation and mitigation plan to the organization. This is basically a custom language. So. I mean, is BAS enough? Let's answer this question as well. Is BAS enough? I mean, for example, if the organization just takes the back, so is it proactive? It is continu continuously security validation. So is it enough for us? So we are now, we are actually giving our answers. We are following this pyramid of the pain. Many people here in the cybersecurity community, they know the pyramid of the pain very well. Pyramid of the Pain was actually presented by the David Bianco and they have offensive, defensive and this, uh, I mean, the Pyramid of Pain actually, it is presented for, for a different perspective, but we call this uh, Pyramid of the Pain, which is our DOD uh, Pyramid of the Pain. So the most top is the offensive. That is the skill set that is very, very difficult to achieve. And you will find very difficult in uh, to to find these skills in people as well. Then we have defensive, okay? So a lot of people are actually working in the defensive and then we have the deceptive as well. 
deceptive one is like working in the cyber deception and working on the uh, threat intelligence and try to gather all the information. So this is our approach. And now we are trying to use this pyramid of the pain in Cytomate for having our APT product. So let me explain the whole scenario again that we actually get the contextual threats. Okay. We simulate them. And then we are also able to tell the nature of the attack as well. Is it usual or we have found someone who is really doing something unique against your organization? Is it really trying to get into what is the purpose trying to get as much as information about the attacker? And this is through our defensive and our deceptive approach. So a more closer look at the DOD uh, pyramid of the pain is actually that we have got cyber reversing framework as well. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I want to mention that we are using artificial intelligence to have the malware function level classification. Nobody has that. I mean, uh, an AI algorithm can tell you whether a malware is, uh, is uh, benign or it's, it's malicious file, binary. But we are using a function level classification and in our project, which is called revenge, which is reverse engineering is actually going to be live very soon there. We will be helping the reverse engineer to uh, classify and see more details about the uh, about the hacker. Then we have the offensive methodology where we do pen tests as well as red teaming. And then we have our breach and attack simulation software as well. And then we have the Decepticon, which is used to have the contextual threats that are being caught, then are, they are checked in the best, and also they are being evaluated in the cyber reversing. So we present this DOD approach as a complete approach or complete package for the organization in order to protect them from contextual threats, in order to have the capability to perform breach and attack simulation and also have the capability to do function level malware classification. So how to empower breach and attack simulation system? Again, I mean, we are using Decepticon with Cytomate. So like unlike other companies like Simulate and many other companies, we are actually having a deception system which is giving a lot of contextual threats to us and we are providing uh, it to the breach and attack simulation. But at the same time, our Decepticon dashboard also contains profiling attackers as well and many other sensitive information about the hackers and also includes a very novel counterattack framework as well. Decepticon actually, on the other hand, has the honeypots provision. We are trying to bring artificial intelligence into the picture where we have more intelligent decoys. So uh, honeypots and decoys concealment. Concealment is actually the, the uh, purpose of changing the skin of the decoy so that, I mean, attacker does not able to identify that whether it's a decoy or not. It is able to uh, circumvent an attacker. So that is the main purpose of having artificial intelligence. We do traffic statistics build a profile, also check for literal movement. So Decepticon has got much more depth to capture the, uh, the contextual threat. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, here now we are starting with the conclusion. I hope we were able to convey this very advanced topic through our examples. And also we presented our product Cytomate APT as well, which is available on Microsoft Azure. And as I said that it's a Doha based cybersecurity startup and also uh, proudly started in Qatar and it is actually providing the offensive security. So if we just recap what we actually learned today in our lecture. So we learned about the purpose of the breach and attack simulation system and why the enterprises need such a system to have checked their infrastructure against uh, against such advanced attacks. Another topic that we have covered is that why 
to have advanced exploitation. I mean, we can have some very small, uh, very easy attacks as well. But what is the dire need? The, the title of the presentation, what, what's the dire need for or demand for advanced exploitation? So we presented some clear use cases that uh, the exploit developers are able to bypass the security controls as well. So how to connect all the tasks? Then we made a comparison as well with Simulate, with SafeBreach, with Ficus, with uh, Attack IQ and all of them that how, uh, what is the distinguished place of Cytomate. And uh, also we discussed that uh, how Cytomate can construct a cyber deception based environment for contextual threat capturing and checking them uh, in the breach and attack simulation system. That's all from our side. And uh, if you have any question, you can send us an email uh, at our email addresses as well, as well as we are here to uh, to answer any of your questions. Please. I have two questions. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, the advanced penetration testing, since uh, Okay, uh, let me ask this question in Urdu. Uh, uh, I am in the industry. I am almost uh, in offensive security. I am in the industry. 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 I believe that one time check is not a good thing. advanced practice or simple penetration testing, one time activity is not a security. Actually, ठीक है आप कहते हैं आप कितना देखिए vulnerability पर research Microsoft भी कर रहा है बाकी सारे दारे research कर रहे हैं you cannot cop any vulnerability कि मैं बहुत advanced हूँ मैं सब चीज़ को cover कर लूँगा there is a loophole always no one is perfect ये जो advanced tactics है ये precisely in बार बार increase हो रहे हैं हर day में exploit आ रहा है आप हर दिन आने वाले exploit को capture नहीं कर सकते ठीक है ना यूपी पे बेक रहे हैं so these are a lot of things are there. So uh, thing is the time frame. I personally believe that the in-house team on the continuous the penetration testing is also continuous process. If you believe a one-time a bash will work, no, it will not work. Honestly, it will not work. Either your client will be your big in true sense of security accomplished in the one time frame. ठीक है आज आपने टेस्ट कर लिया आपके पास एक्सप्लाइट नहीं है किसी और के पास तो एक्सप्लाइट होगा ना उसका तो हाउ कैन यू इश्योर दैट हमारे पास सारे के सारे दुनिया जर के एक्सप्लाइट आ गए हैं तो इट्स इट्स द ट्रू सेंस ऑफ सिक्योरिटी जब आप बात करते हैं तो यू नीड अ कांस्टेंट मॉनिटरिंग कांस्टेंट ऑल द टाइम मॉनिटरिंग बेस इज नॉट द सॉल्यूशन माय फॉर माय रिकमेंडेशन मैंने पे क्लाइंट को रिकमेंड नहीं किया वी आर वेंडर साइड वी आर ऑफरिंग दिस पेन टेस्टिंग सॉल्यूशन एज वेल हम जो कर हमारे पास जो क्लाइंट आते हैं हम को वन टाइम सिक्योरिटी के लिए ऑफर इन करते हैं so this is my principal conflict with the best solution. अगर आप इसपे जवाब देना चाहें तो मुझे लगता है इसको जल्द फॉर इस तरीके से आप ये चीज़ मैं पहले आपके सवाल का आंसर करना चाहता हूँ कि जो ऑब्जेक्टिव है ब्रीच एंड अटैक सिमुलेशन का वो ये है वो बिल्कुल भी कंटिन्यूअस सिक्योरिटी इवैल्यूएशन के ऊपर ऑब्जेक्शन नहीं है बेसिकली breach and attack simulation system is going to give you that capability that you check your organization 24 by 7. Kisi bhi slide ke upar ya kisi bhi jaga ke upar agar humne ye baat kahi ho ke ye one time hai basically. So then I am going to agree with your point. Breach and attack simulation system gives you this capability Let's say you are a vendor, mm -hmm. you are a soft person, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to test your organization at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. in the night. You don't need expert security people to be sitting in your organization all the time. So you can test it basically. That is the capability that is given by the breach and attack simulation. Automatically, Second point is, we clearly differentiated 
between the breach and attack simulation, breach and attack simulation is never going to be focused on vulnerability assessment. Please try to understand. Aapki ek mobile application hai, aapki ek web application hai, aapki ek enterprise application hai. Breach and attack simulation system is never going to check for vulnerability. It is an add-on component. Few BAS vendors are providing it actually. I agree with that. But our total focus is on web application firewall. Hum wo payloads phenkte hain web application firewall pe, jo ke wo bypass kar de. Agar wo bypass ho jain, then we provide mitigations for that. F5 hai, Cloudflare hai, Kona hai. Koi bhi jo aapke paas big IP hai, koi bhi aapke paas web application firewall hai. We create payload or we mutate it in that way. So we work like a hacker. Similarly, if you see the endpoint security protection, we focus on the defender ki example throughout the presentation. Defender ki example I have throughout the presentation, I have not given any other name by the way, but Casper's key is, you have follow all to, you have as many EDR, I am a cafe, our focus is only on security control. Hai. And that works, the original methodology works. It's not about application penetration testing, please. It's not about vulnerability assessment. It is about security control validation. If you see my example, I have said that fire alarm system you have put in the organization. Ke andar. But you need to have a drill. You need to check them. If a cyber security attack, what will we do? That was the example. Yes, basically. So I think I have clearly explained you. I have not said that we are 100% good. But what do we do with the other vendors? That's what I'm telling you. I have told you that the problem of the vendors is that they have to resell it. The reason is that they don't have a contextual threat capture mechanism. I am offering the Decepticon, which is actually equivalent to Ativo or better than them. Ativo, Elkelvio, Shadowplex, all of them. I, I know all of them that are present in the market. My only point is, my brother, that we are capturing that contextual threat. But I have not said that I can wow. provide you 100% security. 100% security, I can't provide it. And definitely, if you click on a phishing link, and you click on a tape, or on a tape, or on a game, or on a cosmetics, then you can't say anything about it. Okay, I have two things that are confusing. Explanation से मुझे आपका जो मॉडल समझ आ गया अनुभव भाई अनुभव भाई टाइम शॉर्ट होगा हमारे पास क्योंकि ना ये सेशन भी खत्म हो जाएगा 40 मिनट के अंदर तो एक चैट में दो सवाल है मैं वो भी जरा करवा लूं मैं मासूम साहब चैट चैट में दो क्वेश्चन है वो देखना जरा जी मैं मैं देख लेता हूं उसमें मैं कॉल मैं मैं पढ़ देता हूं आपको डू यू हैव ओटी OTP based attack library. Yes, yes, yes. We have got the OTP based library as well, and where we actually check all the levels of the OT as well. So it goes from the IT to the jitne zones and uske usme ham breach karne ki koshish karte hain. Pehli baat aur dusri baat ye hai ki jo OT ke darmiyan darmiyan me firewalls lagi hoti hain, we have got a mechanism jisme ham OT ke malwares ko bhi simulate karte hain. Or Hamare, uh, yes, the question was that uh, how the BAS can be used by the customer. Is it yes, it's web based, and how the execution of the attack is performed? Uh, they external may have a kissy 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 permission bhi chahi, very honestly. Uh, lakin, uh, like we need a permission, which means like the attacker, uh, the, the software has to be used externally uh, with the help of that DNS string that we can put in that. So, what I want to say is that in the external, mein, uh, we don't need any, uh, any collaboration or any uh, information from the team. But when we check internal, we have our agent which you can install a VM install kar sakte hai, and then basically you can do it internally. Us pe wo kar sakte a very good question. What kind of VDR you have? Six hundred bypass, G Palo Alto, uh, Microsoft Defender, uh, McAfee, uh, all of them. And, and you are saying change the report here because they are our trusted customers and we are under NDA actually. Okay. So we can't tell you that in Qatar, we have done six places. So what are we using? And 
why uh, it was bypass like we i cannot tell you but i told you the names uh, over where theek hai uh, is it correct that bash tools to not only help us scan the but also give us step by step instruction about removing and getting mitigations actually ye ek bada open topic hai isme mitigations abhi bhi jo provide ki ja rahi hain kuch jo hai wo seam ko bhi de rahe hain sticks ke zariye bhi devices ko enrich kar diya jata hai theek hai Uh, और सीम इज एक्चुअली मोर वाइबल वे जहां पे आप डायरेक्टली उसके साथ बैस uh, को वो कर सकते हैं और थोड़ा सा सोर का भी इसमें वो है सोर uh, के थ्रू भी है वी हैव आल्सो गॉट वन इंटीग्रेशन फॉर शफल एज वेल विच इज एन ओपन सोर्स वो ठीक है जी और वेयर टू लर्न एंड टेस्ट बैस इधर इट इज वर्किंग नॉट येस जी बिल्कुल ये एजोर के ऊपर साइटोमेट से आपको ए पी टी डॉट साइटोमेट डॉट नेट में अवेलेबल है बट यू डेफिनेटली नीड टू रिक्वेस्ट फॉर अ परपेचुअल लाइसेंस एंड देन आई मीन बेस्ड ऑन दी आई मीन दिस इज समथिंग विच मार्केटिंग पीपल कैन डेफिनेटली टेल यू ई मेल भी गिवन है एंड देन दे कैन गिव इट यू एज वेल एनी फर्दर रिलेटेड हॉट रिसर्च एरिया यू वुड लाइक टू हाई लाइट येस दे आर कंप्रोमाइज असेसमेंट आप इसको देख सकते हैं दिस इज अ न्यू Uh, thing which is going on compromise assessment uh, uh, cyber deception ke andar aap ai ka usage de sakte hain bas ke andar ai ka usage de sakte hain our web application component is now being integrated with ai so ai jo hai wo 24 by 7 aapke web application firewall ko uh, uh, check kar sakti hai particularly focus on security controls we are not doing vulnerability assessment and penetration testing let me be very clear on this thing sir ek sawal aur bhi hai beech mein aapne miss kiye wo puch rahe hain ki ji kya ye hame wo bhi batata hai step by step instruction deta hai ki kaise usko remove karna hai mitigation ji 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 mitigations bilkul ye step by step batata hai aapko agar aapke email gateway se outlook mein ya matlab kisi bhi email clients se microsoft ke kuch documents hain jo ki malicious hain agar wo bypass ho rahe hain to wo aapko batata hai ki actually aapne step by step ja ke kahan pe inko जो है सेट करना है ठीक है एंड देन इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पॉलिसी फ्यू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मे नॉट बी एबल टू ब्लॉक द मैक्रोस ठीक है बट मेनी ऑफ देम हैव अ क्वारंटीन मैकेनिज्म एज वेल दैट दे कैन प्रोवाइड सिमिलरली इन एक्टिव डायरेक्टरी एज वेल वी गिव यू मल्टीपल वेज टू प्रोटेक्ट यू फ्रॉम लेटरल मूवमेंट अटैक्स नो इट्स नॉट आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन इफ यू अलाउ मी Yeah so my question is okay uh, what's your scope of uh, how do you engage the activity for example if i'm calling you for back exercise so how do you engage the customer what's your process of engagement pehla to ye sawal hai second is i have one suggestion ki agar aap ek aur slide add kar dein jahan pe thoda sa ek criteria set ho ke this bas uh, kahan pe ja ke zyada suitable hoga kyunki not every customer can handle bas तो एक क्राइटेरिया भी सेट कर दे कि ये दिस कस्टमर सेट इज गुड फॉर पेन टेस्टिंग दिस कस्टमर इज गुड फॉर बैस तो द वे आई एंगेज विद कस्टमर्स जो ज्यादा मिश्योर कस्टमर्स होते हैं वहां पे बैस रियली वर्क्स अगर कोई स्टॉक मिश्योर नहीं है तो वहां पे बैस चलाने का फायदा भी नहीं ठीक है तो आई गेस ये स्लाइड अवॉइड कर सकते हैं बाकी मेरा सवाल वही है कि हाउ डू यू एंगेज योर कस्टमर्स हाउ डू यू स्कोप द एक्सरसाइज scope is that uh, we have a plugin based architecture sarim saab and uh, the plugin based architecture works like this that uh, uh, you have all the things as plugins right so if you all just want to have a web uh, testing so you don't need all others then i mean we will disable all other plugins so we start scope starts with external first first uh, first of all we we do the uh the assessment of your web which includes web vulnerability penetration testing as well i want to actually say here ki usme web ki vulnerability penetration testing include hai lekin hamara waf ka exclusive component hai jo waf ko check karta hai aur baad mein dono ke results ko compare karta hai to pehle hum external se shuru karte hain fir hum internal pe aate hain internal mein hame email gateway ki testing ke liye network ki testing ke liye or endpoint ki testing ke liye तीनों के लिए एक ही वीएम चाहिए एक वीएम सिर्फ चाहिए और उसके ऊपर हम अपना एजेंट इंस्टॉल करेंगे यू कैन एक्चुअली इंस्टॉल इट इन अ वेरी आइसोलेटेड एनवायरनमेंट, लेकिन आपका सिक्योरिटी कंट्रोल वहां पे मौजूद होगा और लाइव और अप होगा एंड देन वी विल वी विल बी डाउनलोडिंग एक्सप्लॉय एंड ईच एंड इवन द अटैचमेंट विल बी कमिंग ऑटोमेटिकली और हमारा जो एजेंट है वो ही आपके ई क्लाइंट से बी इट आउटलुक और एनी अदर वन 
उससे डाउनलोड करके और उसकी रिपोर्ट दे रहा होगा कि कौन से अटैचमेंट्स ईमेल अटैचमेंट्स और कौन से एक्सप्लॉइट्स जो हैं वो नेटवर्क के जरिए अंदर आ सके थे और एग्जीक्यूट भी हो गए थे सो वी क्रिएट डिटेल रिपोर्ट ऑन ऑल दीज कंपोनेंट्स टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन वी स्टार्ट विद एक्सटर्नल एंड देन मूव टू इंटरनल थैंक यू डॉक्टर साहब थैंक यू सर फ्यू मिनट्स रहते हैं सेशन अपने खत्म हो जाएगा आप अपने कंटिन्यू कर लें किसी को मजीद करना हो तो अपना ईमेल दे दीजिएगा आप डॉक्टर जी मैंने एम एम आलम एट साइटो में डॉट नेट जी ये अच्छा डॉक्टर साहब मेरा एक सवाल है सिंपल सा आपके वेबसाइट पे कुछ है कुछ अवेलेबल कुछ फ्री अवेलेबल है जी जी बिल्कुल साइटो में डॉट नेट इज लाइव एंड अप वी हैव आवर मार्केटिंग पर्सन एज वेल लेकिन आप मुझे ई मेल कर दें इन आई कैन री डायरेक्ट यू टू द पर्सन देखिए मैं एक छोटी सी बात फर्दर आखिर में कहूँ कि ये बड़ी ऑफेंसिव प्रोडक्ट है ठीक है मतलब ये एक्चुअली एक अटैक कर रही है तो ये सम हाउ इट्स इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ ट्रस्ट एज वेल सो सम आई मीन बीइंग अ कतरी प्रोडक्ट बीइंग अ साइबर सिक्योरिटी प्रोडक्ट इट इज इजी फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हु आर इन द मियर रीजन टू हैव सच थिंग बिकॉज द पीपल आर हेयर and the exploits and each and everything so you can test them in a very trusted manner as well compared to the vendors actually who are uh, coming from few countries that may not be acceptable in in certain situations so that is also something which i want to uh, make it as a point but otherwise i am available inshallah i mean any thought provoking thing any comment anything actually you want to highlight or uh, tell us uh, we will be glad to answer and inshallah correct ourselves as well Uh, okay sir i will uh, clo- uh, close the session now okay thank you guys uh, we are we will close the session okay so chala on one to two days i will upload the video to our channel and if you have any more questions you can contact him directly or you can contact via me so not a problem thank you thank you sir assalam